Facebook, hey, good morning. Or good afternoon. How are you? Welcome to the weekend. Or what's left of it. I apologize once again for my tardiness. Circumstances have conspired to keep me from my regularly scheduled appearance. However, all is well. I have a story for you. This is the way I heard it. A story, perhaps, of one of the greatest entrepreneurs who ever walked the earth. And the fact that I didn't know this person by name, shame on me. And if you don't know this person either, you're about to, because I'm going to read you this tale that I wrote about six months ago. The way I heard it's coming back. Give me a couple weeks. I've got to get ahead of the curve, so I'm writing as fast as I can. We'll be back on iTunes and Google and Stitcher in no time. In the meantime, i got these for you. I also have some good news regarding events this week on the Facebooks. First of all, I'm not dead. Uh, in spite of the reports <laughs> that continue to circulate, regarding my untimely, premature, and completely fabricated demise, um, I'm alive. Uh, people are assuming I'm dead because there was a story about me uh, shooting at a drone. Uh, and you know how the internet goes. It gets silly. Anyway, I'm alive. Uh, secondly, I'm not, uh, I'm not crazy, <laughs> although people have begun to ask me about that as well. Due in part, I suppose... Uh, because I sat at this table not long ago, mostly naked, uh, in a strange, uh, busty apron uh, with a shotgun. It's a long story, but the enthusiasm that came from that particular post was not motivated by my pending lunacy, but rather some very generous donations from supporters of the MicroWorks Foundation, specifically uh, Kathleen, uh, oh gosh, what was her last name? Well, Kathleen, who spent $5,000 for this robe, and somebody who made an anonymous donation on that same day of $40,000. So you'll forgive me if my enthusiasm got the better of me, uh, but I'm not crazy. Finally, <laughs> this thing yesterday deserves some kind of explanation. This guy, his name is Doug, and Doug is building a, uh, a boat in his front, in his front lawn. It's, it's called the Seeker, the SV Seeker, and he's chronicling the business of building a boat. I just spent half of yesterday on his website watching uh, his adventure, and it's really great. Check it out. Google uh, SV Seeker. You'll find him. But in the middle of his project, he stopped and, apropos of nothing, did a commercial for this MicroWorks uh, marker that my buddies over at the Pen Company of America have been uh, allowing us to sell to help raise even more money for the foundation. And when I stumbled across this thing, I had to share it with people because, well, for a lot of reasons. Watch this. So, I mean, it's very nice and I'm very grateful for it, but now we're getting hundreds of emails about about the woman in the background who's lounging uh, in a somewhat insouciant way with with stars on her uh, on her shirt. We're also getting many questions about their dog. <laughs> Got a graphic and everything. Now here comes the dog. So, anyway, it just tickles me to no end because you can go to RevMarkUSA.com and you can get the finest marker ever made, an industrial strength marker with a virtually indestructible tip that will completely change your world, due in part because of the cap that has this elongated thing that allows you to attach it, as Doug just explained. But all that aside, um, where else can you go to have half a million people engaged in a conversation about all the little details in a video like this? I just, I just find it fascinating. Also fascinating, the phone call I just got from Greg Shea. Greg is over there at the Penn Company of America. You guys know the story. His family's been in the business for four generations now. This is a, the Penn Company of America is kind of a David to the Goliath of all the other big giant pen companies. They actually make their products here in the United States, and they've partnered with us to do this thing. And Greg called to say, hey, who is that guy, Doug? I said, I, I don't really know. He's making a boat in his front yard. He goes, oh, he's, he's better spokesman than you. Maybe we should call him. <laughs> Maybe you should. 
Uh, RefMarkUSA.com. Get yourself some of these. 10% comes back to the foundation. In fact, you know what Greg also told me? He said that 10% of anything on the web store is actually coming back to MicroWorks. So they've, they've upped their contribution, and you don't even have to enter the promo code for us to get the donation. But the promo code is important so we know who's going there. It's Mike10. Mike10. Enter that. You'll also get 10% off your mark. Anyway, having said all that, want to hear a story? <laughs> Why not? What is this? Oh, look at this. The Collected Poems of Wallace Stevens. I haven't read this in years, but it makes a great stand for my computer. It's called Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. In the summer of 99, Sarah Breedlove walked into her modest bathroom, looked into her modest mirror, and wondered just how much worse things could get. Several inches above her hairline, two patches of scalp the size of silver dollars were shining like headlights in the morning mist. After years of denial, there was no longer any sense in pretending. Sarah was going bald. Losing her hair at 32 was a blow, but Sarah was no stranger to adversity. She was an orphan at seven, a bride at 14, a mother at 17, and a widow at 20. In the summer of 89, she and her five-year-old daughter left Vicksburg and moved to St. Louis looking for a new life. There, Sarah found work as a housekeeper, but she longed for something more. For a while there, she thought it might be the handsome man with a million-dollar smile and cool confidence who became her second husband. Unfortunately, that cool confidence accompanied a hot temper and an even hotter girlfriend, neither of which Sarah confirmed until she said, I do, and both of which precipitated the aforementioned follicular exodus. Which brings us back to the summer of 99 and Sarah's steadfast resolution to wash that man right out of her hair and in so doing, save what remaining locks she had. So, Sarah divorced her no-good philandering Lothario and prayed the advent of domestic tranquility would reverse her hair loss. Alas, it did not. Every morning, her sink filled with more and more tresses and her mirror with more and more cranium. Then one night, something rather remarkable happened. Sarah had a dream in which an old man revealed to her a combination of herbs and oils that would solve her problem. Now, Sarah was a rational woman, but she was also a woman with nothing to lose. So, she rustled up all the ingredients and whipped up a homemade, dream-inspired pomade. And lo and behold, after a few weeks of daily application, Sarah started to see results. A few months later, she was astounded. Not only was her hair thicker and less brittle, her bald spots were vanishing a little more every day. Sarah's relief was overwhelming, but so too was her excitement. She was onto something big and she knew it. What she didn't know was how to turn a product into a company. So Sarah started making the concoction in her own kitchen. She bottled it herself and took the product door to door. Armed with before and after photos, she told her story to anybody who would listen. She told her story a thousand times over, 12 hours a day, day after day. She drove across the state, then she drove across the country, and wherever she went, people bought her product faster than she could make it. People loved her product so much, Sarah started paying them to sell it for her. She saved her money until she had enough to open a factory. Then she opened another one. Then she opened hair colleges all across the country. Before long, Sarah had turned thousands of satisfied customers into sales agents, creating no less than 40,000 jobs. Truth is, Sarah Breedlove is one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the modern age. And if you're wondering why her name isn't familiar, it might be because Back in 05, when she married for the third time, she took her husband's name as her own. That's why America knows Sarah Breedlove as Madam C.J. Walker. And if that name still doesn't ring a bell, maybe it's because Sarah Breedlove didn't become Madam C.J. Walker in 2005. No, that happened in Denver back in 1905. And when she left Vicksburg for a fresh start in St. Louis, that was not the first time she hit the reset button. Now, Sarah started working 
when she was five years old, picking cotton on a Louisiana farm alongside her mom and dad, two sharecroppers who worked as slaves before Sarah was even born. The world is full of successful women who have overcome adversity, and their stories are all worth remembering, but Sarah's story should never be forgotten, because long before Estee Lauder and Mary Kay and Avon, there was, once upon a time, an impossibly poor woman who did other people's laundry, a woman with bald spots and bad luck with men, a daughter of slaves, now with a daughter of her own, who looked into the mirror one day and decided to become someone else, Madam C.J. Walker, the first self-made female millionaire in American history. Something to remember next time the odds seem too long, or the work seems too hard, or you just feel like pulling your hair out. Anyway, that's the way I heard it. Sarah Breedlove. Anyway, I threw a lot at you there. You listened for 11 minutes. I appreciate that. You know, people ask me all the time, Mike, what's with the hat? Why'd you wear a hat all those years? Are you bald? I'm not bald. I just, I just like the hat. Anyway, <laughs> have a great weekend.